Well, I had the absolute joy today of meeting Rebecca Junkins today at the very place she volunteers. That's Selene Memorial Hospital. And she first served in law enforcement. And after she retired, she embarked on the journey of greeting and helping people at the front desk because she couldn't get enough of serving others. So let's take a listen to her remarkable journey through servanthood. Rebecca, thanks so much for joining us here on Little Rock Art today. We appreciate your time. We also appreciate your service, and I know you've dedicated so much of your life to serving others. Tell me a little bit about why you're here, why you're at Selene Memorial, and also where you were previously. I was a policeman for 33 years. Um, I retired as a sergeant from the Little Rock Police Department, and <clears throat> after I retired, um, I did get back into some things that I had wished I was able to do previously. One of those things were to be involved in my church more, and, and I was able to do those things. And But even with that, there still seemed to be just kind of a, I don't know, something missing from my life. And so um, just as time went on, uh, we went, I retired in December of 2018, and um, after just doing things at church and then uh, just really feeling that I needed, I just needed something else. And so my husband, who works here at Selene Memorial in the IT department, said, well, why don't you think about volunteering? And I said, well, that's not going to work right now since it's COVID. And so <clears throat> after COVID, he came back again and said, have you thought any more about volunteering? And I said, well, a little bit. And he <clears throat> asked me several more times. And so finally I said, all right, I'll go down and talk to him. And and uh, if it's what I want, I'll, I'll give it a year. Well, here it is, end of year three. And so, uh, but I did come down and I talked to Teresa. She's the coordinator for the volunteers. and. Uh, she walked me through the process of, you know, we have to do a background check and, you know, do a drug test just like anywhere else, you know, and um, she told me she wasn't too worried about me passing that, but uh, I, after all that, I went through orientation and ended up on the front desk, and so um, it's nice being able to, to really come back and, and be part of a community and help. I did that for a long time. I was in the community, you know, for, for all those years that I worked at the police department. And, you know, it really seemed to fill that void that, that I was missing, you know, during those couple of years after I retired. And, you know, Selene Memorial was considered a community hospital. And so there are lots of people that live here in this area that come to this hospital on a consistent basis. And we also have a fairly large, older uh, group of people that come here. They've been coming here for a lot of years. But as you know, a lot of times, you know, especially the older people, they come in and they don't know where they're going. And, and you can just see, you know, in their face that they're upset and, and it's nice to be able to, to help them out and get them where they need to be, you know, because for them, coming to to have a procedure in the hospital is a really big to-do. And so, you know, while it, it doesn't seem like much to give them directions or, or take them somewhere where they need to go, but for them, you can tell how much that means to them. And, and that's nice to see, and it's nice to you know, to, to know that you've helped somebody that day. In three years of this, I mean, your husband must know you well, <laughs> getting you to volunteer, getting you involved. And I just love that neat story of wanting to find something after 33 years in law enforcement. And I mean, you've truly lived the life of service. When did the love of service start for you? Was it day one on the job as a police officer? Oh yeah, it. I knew that, uh, well, actually, I. I had always wanted to be a police officer growing up. I mean, I remember when I was 10 years old um, wanting to to be a policeman. And so when I turned 21, that's what I did. And I knew that this was what I was going to spend my life doing. I knew that I was going to retire uh, 
you know, from a career of being a police officer. And I was fortunate in the fact that I was able to be promoted to sergeant. And, and one of the things that I loved about being a sergeant is uh, having that opportunity to help mold those young officers that come out of the academy and, and see their training come to fruition. You know, when they come out of the academy, they have to go through a process of being with a field training officer and, and to be able to watch those guys and help mold those guys, you know, as a supervisor was really fulfilling. So 33 years of that, now three years of this, and I'm sure you see a lot of stories walk through these doors at Slane Memorial. I'm sure you hear a lot of stories, you see a lot of emotions. What does it mean to you to sit at that front desk and be there for those people? It really means a lot because it's amazing how many people when you're sitting at that desk that I try real hard when they come in to, to say, how are you today, to speak to them. And, and it's amazing how many people will walk up to that desk and just start talking and t start telling you about things that are going on in their life. And, you know, or <clears throat> several people have stopped and just talked about, you know, I've been here with a family member for three weeks or because of one issue or, or another that, you know, I've had people come and, and say that, yeah, I think my my family member's gonna pass, you know, and just to 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 let them know that somebody cares. Mm -hmm. They and you may you know, I may do nothing but just sit and listen. And and that's what they need. Mm -hmm. That's just what they need. They want someone to 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 hear them and acknowledge them and 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 you know just show that there's some concern there mm -hmm. and and it's nice to be able to do that and to show them that you know what people do care about you you know you may be up here by yourself with your family member but people do care about you and i keep saying it but i mean this story is truly the epitome of servanthood <laughs> and it's remarkable and i've loved just sitting here and hearing your story is there any piece of advice that you would give to you know maybe a young person who wants to start serving or someone who's also spent their life serving is there any piece of advice about service that you could give to people well if i had to tell anybody anything is one it's not hard to be nice it's not hard to be nice mm -hmm. and no matter how old you are, whether you're 10 years old or where you, whether you're 100 years old, you can always serve the community. You can always be nice. You can always show people that you care. Mm -hmm. It, you know, it, 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 there's no age range. And, you know, it, my pastor said something one time to um, our senior group that I just love. He said, you know, God knows that if you're if you're not dead, you're not done. So there's always something that you can do. Absolutely, I love that, Miss Rebecca. Thank you so much for joining us here on Little Rock Art today. You truly have a story worth sharing, so we appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Well, I just love hearing other people's stories, and Miss Rebecca's story just really touched my heart.